uh, as a little backgrounder, we, we exist in uh, an area that covers only about 3% of uh, the Earth's surface, but it hosts some 18% uh, of uh, all known plants and animals, and we have a collective 173 or so uh, kilometers of uh, coastal areas or shorelines in the region. So I think uh, the Philippines and Indonesia uh, contributes much to this, and uh, the Lao PDR uh, being not a coastal country uh, has no contribution to this type of process. So feel free to stop me at any point in the presentation to uh, correct any of my uh, statistics. So uh, having said that, uh, the ASEAN has uh, 30% of uh, the current species uh, of the world, not in amounts, but uh, in the numbers, but in the number of species only. 35% of minor species and 33% of the uh, seagrass species. So that's how uh, biodiverse the region is. And however, uh, we are challenged by uh, several issues and it covers, uh, of course, uh, overfishing and you might note the fishing down the food web uh, theory of uh, Dr. Daniel Pauli. And uh, on your left, you would see uh, some, uh, not, if you're not familiar, there's some uh, last fishing equipment uh, for more efficient uh, fishing. We have uh, also uh, issues associated <coughs> with our inland waters. And some of the icons uh, below here uh, inform you that uh, the types of uh, issues that are being that beset our inland waters, such as uh, pollution and also invasive species. We have pressures in uh, agro, um, agro biodiversity. We have uh, erosion of our genetic material, conversion of um, a lot of agricultural lands, decline in the pollination uh, services. This was specifically highlight, highlighted by the Invest uh, report and also on invasive species. So uh, moving on with the invasive species, we have a uh, very significant loss because of invasives. And uh, the ASEAN has also uh, identified the, the top five invasive alien species in the ASEAN region, and this is their uh, distribution. And so uh, all of those uh, issues have now uh, led ASEAN countries established uh, ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. Our uh, mandate is to uh, facilitate and coordinate discussions on uh, biodiversity and related uh, thematic issues. And, uh, we have uh, actually an uh, agreement with the uh, CBT or the Convention on Biological Diversity. To, to promote specifically uh, compliance to by 2011 and that would be on uh, establishment of protected areas and also uh, on uh, doing work on those species, specifically on uh, avoiding its extinction. So uh, one of our main programs, therefore, based on that agreement, would be the ASEAN Heritage Parks program, or uh, more commonly we call it the AHPs. ASEAN Heritage Parks are nominated by uh, each of the ASEAN member countries. And every year they present their nominations to the ASEAN Reward Group for um, <coughs> major conservation and biodiversity. So today we have uh, 49 ASEAN Heritage Parks, and uh, a lot of these are including uh, Philippines uh, and Indonesia. Uh, of course, the smaller countries will have uh, less numbers of uh, AHPs. And among the 49, we have about uh, eight um, marine and coastal uh, AHPs, and the rest would be uh, the rest of ASEAN uh, Heritage Parks. Although these ASEAN Heritage Parks do not contribute to the actual numbers of uh, protected areas, because as part of their nomination, they have to be already uh, gazetted national uh, protected areas, but uh, the benefit of being part of the ASEAN Heritage Parks program is that uh, your parks are highlighted 
in, uh, in general, uh, because the ACP would uh, receive funds in terms of its programs, the ASEAN Heritage Parks were nominated um, that have the first dibs or the first, uh, uh, are the first recipients of uh, this donor uh, resources. And uh, we have now generated some, uh, some a lot of funds from uh, German government, uh, some German banks, and, and the city. So this is the distribution of uh, ASEAN heritage parks in, in the region. So uh, since we're based here in the Philippines, we sort of have a lot of AHPs, but the AHPs in Indonesia are really, really large and sometimes very difficult to, to go to. But it's good that uh, uh, they have some form of uh, conservation. Another benefit of the ASEAN Heritage Parks Program is that uh, their national, their plans are, are being uh, developed. It's very difficult to uh, prepare the um, uh, protected area plan because there's a lot of resources that gets to be invested in assessments and getting people together. But uh, if you're part of the AHP, uh, somehow that those expenses get covered. Okay, so the next uh, AHP uh, conference is happening next week, actually. Uh, that will be in uh, Paxi, in, in uh, PDR. So uh, this year it was supposed to be in Indonesia, but Indonesia has now uh, its uh, preparation for their um, elections, and uh, they uh, turn it over to now PDR. The next one might be in Indonesia. So uh, the conference should not only be bringing about the the park managers together, but uh, they will also uh, have the benefit of uh, experts who on protected areas who come to advise uh, uh, their work through their presentations, and it will also be the venue of the science advisory committee of PC. Uh, so, as in addition to the funds that are being received. The AHPs would be recipient of uh, capacity building support and, uh, as I mentioned, uh, support the development and implementation of uh, protected area management plans. Okay. Uh, one of the programs that we have would be the, the Big Bank uh, project that's being supported by uh, EU. And uh, in addition to identifying more uh, protected areas, uh, the VCAP supports uh, effective area-based conservation measures and I think uh, that's also one of the new uh, terminologies that have been developed through the IG targets, the OECMs or the other uh, effective area-based conservation measures. So uh, the Small Grants Program is also uh, supported by uh, Germany and implemented uh, through KFW and uh, it should be implemented in Indonesia and Myanmar. So um, the reason why this first investment was uh, put in Indonesia and Myanmar is uh, because uh, in our um, data, uh, the reforestation and related activities in these two largest countries in the ASEAN would affect uh, most of the ASEAN uh, information. So if you imagine this to be a graph, and if anything happens in the forests of Indonesia and Myanmar, and if it, it really uh, presents a big uh, difference in, in uh, what's happening, for example, in reforestation or in the decrease uh, of, uh, of forest area. But in, in areas, for example, <coughs> Uh, in the course of implementing the IG targets, the Philippines and, and Vietnam have registered positive, uh, positively in reforestation, but in, in the overall ASEAN picture, uh, still uh, Indonesia and Myanmar that have uh, the biggest impacts on what's happening in the ASEAN region. And also, uh, the, the next uh, SGP site would be in uh, Vietnam. 
So Vietnam has registered a positive, <coughs> positively in uh, reforestation. And hopefully, uh, the part three or, uh, of, of this uh, initiative might be different in so that's still under negotiation. Another program is the ISB, or the Institutional Strengthening of Biodiversity, and this is being implemented by uh, GIZ. And uh, it came in two phases. We have just concluded ISB 1, which supported the regional cooperation in meeting the challenges of biodiversity conservation. ISB 2 will be investing in conservation and mainstreaming of biodiversity in the ASEAN region. And if you look into the IG biodiversity targets, that would be IG target 2. So uh, another uh, project that we have would be the biodiversity-based products. This came about because uh, there were some issues of uh, people living around the park and uh, they were um, collecting their resources for their livelihoods from within the park. So uh, to be able to, to set the balance between uh, people's livelihoods and, and conservation, uh, the, the value chain was incorporated into the plan or, or the design of this, uh, of this project and then improving the value chains uh, of products actually help people have their own livelihoods and at the same time uh, conserve the protected areas where they are at. I think a, an example would be uh, on bamboo in Lao PDR. Uh, the people used to collect the bamboo shoots and, and uh, sell them for export. And uh, they had some maybe two million kids collectively uh, among them uh, to sell. And however, when the value chain was studied and then they were taught how to uh, develop other livelihood products from out of the bamboo, such as um, baskets and, and small furniture, it increased their income and it also allowed the bamboo to grow so that uh, the initial purpose of uh, abating sedimentation uh, was also addressed. So, uh, and also uh, the reason why that whole idea was bought by uh, the stakeholders around the protected area was that it increased their income 58 times. So uh, that was one of the basis of the success of, of this project. And it also uh, had similar uh, nice stories to tell in the three countries where it was implemented, in Vietnam, in Lao PDR, and in Cambodia. So this is one of the products in, in Vietnam, the Chao Ko Lam. I'm not sure if there's anybody from, from Vietnam here, but this is uh, supposed to be a, a plant that's uh, very healthy, and you can use it in, in your food and as tea. So another uh, program that we are involved with is the EAAFP, or the East Asian Australasian Planning Partnership. You see from this uh, figures, you have like nine flyways globally. So a flyway would cons consist of uh, one of these, and you notice that uh, I think uh, from the picture you'd say that uh, birds. Uh, winter in, in warmer areas. So from that principle, um, the ASEAN belongs to the EAAF, this red one here. And uh, the birds in the EAF come from Russia and um, parts of uh, Alaska. And they go through this and winter in Australia and New Zealand. However, uh, well, some of the areas uh, where the birds uh, stop over, or they say stage, staging areas, are now, um, see, they've been converted to malls. The coastal areas where they used to feed are now uh, converted to other uses. So this habitat change uh, has uh, deprived the birds of the staging areas. And from 500,000 birds in the northern EAF, only half of them actually reach their 
uh, wintering sites in New Zealand. So that 50% loss has to be really uh, addressed. So uh, there has been a focus on the transboundary nature of the conservation of these migratory species. This is the spoonbill sandpiper. I think it's the spoonbill sandpiper. Ah, okay. Okay, and, and they are one of the uh, threatened species. But the, the one that uh, is projected to be extinct by 2020 is the spoonbill uh, sandpiper. And uh, although there are new sightings and even there are claims of sightings in the Philippines, their populations have dropped very, very low, to very, very low levels. So uh, the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity got together with uh, um, the AFP partners in the ASEAN region and they set up the, the ASEAN Flyway Network. And these are some of the network sites. And this was is now supported by JAMI. It's uh, for the Japan um, collaboration with ACB. And with over a million US dollars, they're supporting surveys and conservation activities in these sites. So uh, we're still preparing the, the website, but uh, if not visit here, we'll have the number of uh, sites uh, for countries participating. Um, ACB is also uh, supporting capacity enhancement. Um, well, they, they're saying that you cannot actually conserve what you don't uh, ident can identify or what we don't know about. So we have uh, initiatives on taxonomy, and there's a lot of training going on in the production of field guides and books and write shops, and um, these are uh, very iterative. So we have uh, write shops and taxonomic training um, in, in several uh, species, and this, these trainings are hosted by uh, several countries. Um, another focus of, of ACB, this is not actually a, a program or a project anymore, it's like an ongoing um, activity, it's part of the organizational structure of ACB. And this is the unit that I have, this is the Biodiversity Information uh, Management uh, Unit, and we maintain the ASEAN Clearinghouse Mechanism. A clearinghouse is a platform online where you have your most of your information it's like a knowledge uh, base and um, that's actually based on the design uh, that was um, suggested by CDB. So most of the ASEAN member states and or all of the parties to the CDB are uh, enjoined to develop their clearinghouse mechanisms. But in the ASEAN, the ASEAN clearinghouse mechanism draws information from all of the CHMs of the ASEAN member states. And also from out of the data, we prepare the series of the ASEAN Biodiversity Outlook series. You can actually uh, Google that and you can download it. The ABO or the ASEAN Biodiversity Outlook is a document uh, that's prepared every time, every after the ASEAN member states submit their national report. So you might have been involved in the preparation of your national reports to the CDP. And uh, at the ACB, we aggregate such information every after the report. So the latest one we have is the ABO2. And now we're in the process of uh, preparing the ABO3. We're just waiting for all of the AMS, ASEAN member states, to submit their national reports. I think we only have half of them right now. We also have a cooperation with India for um, the ACB NBA cooperation that does their national biodiversity agency. And through this collaboration, we have uh, some activities relating to ABS, access and benefit sharing, uh, urban diversity, and supporting uh, the achievement of the IG biodiversity targets. We're also co-developing the TKTL or the traditional knowledge the library for the ASEAN region and uh, it is quite an exciting piece of work because 
we're looking into preparing the metal links for the PBL, and uh, actually this would be a, a platform where the ASEAN member states could look up their resources that would have potential as uh, products in industry, in pharmacy, and where uh, they could refer to us uh, in reference that or they could claim those resources as theirs, and so that they then be subject to, to buy buyers. So uh, we're still in that developing uh, stage also, and we might have a, a meeting with uh, our uh, India counterparts in December to validate the database structure as well as uh, validate the content with our ASEAN member states. So sometimes in database information we have to balance the accessibility and the availability because not all ASEAN member states are willing to, to share all of the information. So that's why I said we're developing a meta database. A meta database means that uh, we're just saying what we have and where it can be found and where the details can be found and the ASEAN member states will deal with that details the party inquiry. If, if it's, this is not easy to understand, by the way, you might want to just talk to me about the PDL after the talk. We also have a program for youth uh, in the ASEAN region. We have uh, the AYDP, and uh, this is uh, currently uh, ongoing. And, um, yeah, Jason, you can still join We can, we can also. And, uh, we, we celebrate International Youth Day, and there are a lot of uh, activities where we enjoy the youth of the ASEAN to their uh, thematic interest. Oh, so uh, it evolves. It can be on biodiversity and health, it can be biodiversity and ex or anything that, that comes out of their discussions. So we try to make the point that the youth are involved in the major discussions around the ASEAN member states. Are into, uh, right now. Yeah, yeah. Here, 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 and they take care of uh, preparing the communication materials, strategies, exhibits, and uh, also supporting some of the work of BIM and to, to uh, popularize some of our uh, products in terms of um, sometimes the medicinal plants of, of the ASEAN. We have, uh, we have a lot of other um, material that we don't publish as paper. We just publish them uh, online. Yeah, it's it's a more more flexible because sometimes you can add pages and then you don't waste paper. And you can just find this in uh, the the ACD website. So there's also a lot going on in terms of uh, promoting biodiversity in schools, not only in the Philippines but um, in the ASEAN. We try to have it back to back with uh, our projects to, to visit the schools and also uh, some of them are in, in, in the Philippines and uh, actually tonight there's going to be an event in, in Manila on uh, linking uh, the challenge children to, to biodiversity work. So uh, we also uh, promote a lot of sub-regional cooperation uh, this is to, to have um, an international flavor to our work and also so that most of our information are, are interoperable or are on the same platform as the, the global uh, bodies such as the GBIF, the Global Biodiversity uh, Information Facility. We, we base our database on the stru database structure of GBIF. And uh, we work with IUCN uh, on, on the results of our uh, work, our databases. And also we work with uh, IUCN in terms of um, putting our uh, protected areas database into the proper platform and also accessible to 
most uh, countries in, in the world. And yeah, so this is not all. We, we still have a lot, but I just couldn't fit the iPads on the page. Um, we also support the regional commitments. Um, ACB, as part of the ASEAN, um, supports uh, most of the commitments that the ASEAN member states have. This is just an example. This is the back of the declaration on the poverty uh, by the region in the ASEAN region. So, uh, this would be maybe the usual picture that you see the newspapers after each of the ASEAN meetings or working together. The assets cross borders, and I'd like to, to leave you with a, a note that the, our Department of Foreign Affairs uh, told us one time that uh, we might not be noticing it, but since we joined the ASEAN, like all of the ASEAN member states got together, we have not had a war among us for the past. <laughs> So that, that would like spell out the benefit of being a CLE understood. So thank you very much. And if you need more information, please check us out at uh, clbiodiversity.org and for information and data at chm.clbiodiversity.org. Thank you very much for having me.